Hello and welcome to Multiplying Freedom Ministry series of classes in spiritual warfare, healing and deliverance. I'm Bruce Gordon and we are getting into tonight the whole issue of staying free and radical biblical discipleship being necessary for true spiritual freedom. We are going to get into this. It is very challenging, but it's something that everyone that's involved with healing and deliverance needs to be aware of these considerations. Everybody that wants to be free, same thing. These are not optional. These are not things that we can get sloppy about. We have to be watching them. So biblical discipleship. Well, biblical discipleship in the way that we're going to look at it tonight is a matter of taking the New Testament and rigorously, specifically applying it to every place in our life where we are aware that God wants to do something. Give you an example. Let's say that we have had some healing prayer from somebody, we're feeling much better, and then we are going about our affairs a day or a week or a month later, and we just have a little slight suspicion that God wants to touch base with us about something, that God has something he wants to chat about. And he wants us to do something about a certain habit, a certain relationship, or something that he makes it clear God has got his finger on something. Now, at that point, we have two choices. We can say, eh, it's not really a good time, God. You know, I'm, I'm really tired. I'm really busy. Or we can say, well, you know, I've been thinking about this, but God, I just need more time to do it. Or we can say to the Holy Spirit, God himself, say, look, this is what's going on. I want you to lead me, show me, enable me, and clean me out so that there is no more place for the enemy. St. Paul says in Ephesians, give no place to the devil. Place, in this sense, is a situation where Something is going on, and we are following our own way instead of God's way. If we are following our own way instead of God's way, we are giving place to the devil because we are departing from the way of the Spirit, we're departing from the way of Christ, and we are going in a different direction, which is going to take us under the influence and open us to the operations of the evil one. This is something you really don't want to see happening. Now, Jesus said in the well-known story in Matthew 12 and Luke 11, the house which has been cleaned out and the demon is going around after he's been evicted and he's saying, I don't know what's, what I'm going to do, but I'm going to do something here and I'm going to take a look and we're going to look at that. Uh, we're going to look at that right now in the name of Jesus, because it's very important. Matthew 12, 42, and we have um, Luke eleven twenty four. Let's see. Here we are. Matthew 12, 43. <clears throat> when the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it wanders through waterless regions looking for a resting place, a place, but it finds none. Then it says, I'll return to my house from which I came. When it comes, it finds it empty, swept, and put in order. Then it goes and bring along seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they enter and live there, and the last state of that person is worse than the first. This is pretty serious business, and God wants us to be free. He does not want us to be brought back into bondage. Paul tells us the same thing. Paul says, for freedom, Christ has made you free. Do not submit yourselves again to a yoke of bondage. This is critical because if we are doing our own thing, going our own way, following our own desires and our own mind on things, we have departed from the way of the Lord if the Lord has something else to say. Now, it's very common to be in even very good churches and not hear much said about obedience to Christ. Now, Christ was very, very uncompromising when it came to obedience. He said, if you love me, you will obey my words. He said in other places, 
He says, if anyone wants to come after me, let him take up his cross, deny himself. Denying yourself doesn't mean skipping dessert. It means taking a hard, close look at our entire life and saying, is there anything here that God is not pleased with? Is there anything here that is not the way God wants it? If I have understood somehow that there is another way that God wants me to go and I'm not doing it, I need to fix that right away. This is called true discipleship. True discipleship is not going to a class. It's not doing a, a little study guide exercise where you fill in the blanks and you get a little you know, thing and says, okay, you did a discipleship class. Discipleship is an ongoing process whereby we surrender our will, our mind, our feelings, our present, our future, everything, we surrender it to Christ for him to direct it and do with it according to his will. Anything less is not true New Testament discipleship. Paul says this, you don't have to just listen to Jesus. Some people say, oh, Jesus, that was before the cross. That was before Pentecost. You know, you got to understand. It's like, fine. If you don't want to obey Jesus, who is Lord of all, let's look at Paul. Paul says, you've got to obey Jesus. He is the foundation. He is the cornerstone. Don't go thinking that you can depart from what he says and have no consequences. There's no way to do it. So what you have with these situations is we need to make sure that everything around us is lined up the way God wants it. It is lined up so that the Holy Spirit has got nothing to correct. Now, let's say you're post- post-deliverance. You've had healing prayer, you've had deliverance prayer, whatever it is. Now you're trying to walk it out. Walking it out is very important. What you want to be doing is you want to be rigorously looking at your life, every area, our finances, our relationships, our time, our sleep, what we're eating, how we're spending our free time, how we take care of ourselves, are we doing these things the way God has spelled it out in the word? Well, I don't know. I'm not sure. Well, I'll tell you how you can be sure. You can pick up your Bible and go and read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Try it sometime. If you've never tried it, it's life-changing. You will never be the same. Go and look and see what Jesus said that we should do. Jesus said, and this is very instructive for deliverance or anything else. He said, there are two builders. One built his house on the sand. This is a person who hears my words, but does not obey them. He understands what I, what I want, but he decided not to obey it. I'll show you what he's like. He's like a guy who built his home on the sand. And when the hurricane came by, the whole thing went down with a loud crash. He said he contrasted it with, here is the one who listens to my words. He does what I say. He obeys my words. I'll show you what he is like. It is like a builder who built his, his house on a very strong foundation. And when the storm came, his house stood up. It didn't go down. It stood up because he built it on the rock. Now, you can look at this and you can have many, many applications. The most important one for our purposes is, what's our life gonna be like after we go and after we say, all right, I'm gonna you know, follow up on this prayer and then I'm gonna go do this or do that. Are we building our life on that? It, Paul said, Nobody can lay a foundation other than the one God laid, and that is on Jesus Christ. If you're trying to build on any other foundation, what somebody's church says, what some author or speaker says, what some therapist says, what some friend or some girlfriend says, you're in for trouble if it's different than what Jesus said. And, you know, this could be looking, looked at very negatively and said, oh, come on, Bruce. You know, this is today, you know, people can't, you know, people have to live, they got a life, it's different now. 
Well, I'll tell you what, around the world, the people who are getting free and staying free, they have radically overhauled their life. They've radically gone and they are looking at the gospels and they're reading through Paul's letters. I'll tell you what I would do if I was recommending something to somebody who was fresh out of deliverance, I'd say, here's what you do. You go home every day, you read one chapter of Proverbs. Guaranteed, God will speak to you out of that chapter of Proverbs. Today is the 24th, read chapter 24 of Proverbs. Tomorrow's the 25th, read chapter 25. Read a paragraph of the Gospels, more if you have the time. Read a psalm, pray the psalm. Read a little bit of one of Paul's letters or John's letters. Look at them, study them, and let the word speak to you. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you Take the scripture and treat it as though there is nothing more important. Why is this important? It says in the Song of Solomon, the little foxes spoil the vines. It's often not the big obvious problems or questions that are causing us trouble. It is often little things that we don't even notice, but they are causing us big trouble. This is what we've got to look at. We've got to say, I'm fixing everything that I can put my hand to. Look around and see, ask the Holy Spirit. Just say, Lord, is there anything in my life that you want to change? Is there anything in my life that you want to fix or adjust or talk to me about? You will be sure the Holy Spirit will speak to you after having a conversation like that. Another thing that's part of discipleship is getting yourself healthy. Now, many people have gone through many traumas, hurts, difficulties, problems, and they are still not healed. If you have any unhealed hurts, unhealed trouble, unhealed trauma, difficulties from the past, do yourself and everybody around you a favor and get prayer and make sure that those places are healed thoroughly. What happens if they're not healed is you have unhealed places in your soul, in your thoughts, your feelings, your memories, your cognition, your personality, and every place in there that's not healed gives the enemy an opportunity to come in and make trouble. If it is healed and sealed with the Holy Spirit and the blood of Jesus, you are going to be okay because the enemy cannot get to you. The enemy can attack, but what you've done is you've gone and you have taken through and done the healing process that gives the enemy less to work on. Another thing, New Testament, the New Testament stresses community and fellowship. It stresses the one another's. If, there, if you do not have somebody in your life that you can talk to, that you can open yourself up to, that you can even say, look, can you pray for me? I really messed up and I need some help. Or can you help me with this relationship or this situation because I need help? If there's nobody in your life that you can do that with, make that a priority. Make sure that there's people in your life that you could be really open with and you can approach them with your trouble with your problem or even with a sin that you're dealing with. Very critical because people who don't have anywhere to go, nobody to talk to, nobody to relate to, they generally don't do very well long term. Another thing that we would recommend very strongly is going to our YouTube channel, Multiplying Freedom. Multiplying Freedom YouTube channel has there a playlist Steps to Freedom. It's self-deliverance videos, and there's some spiritual warfare videos as well. Go through them one by one. Take your time. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you and heal you and deliver you. Those self-deliverance videos and the spiritual warfare videos on our YouTube channel are made to be relatively short. They're 15 or 20 minutes apiece. They're made so that you can pray through them along with me and get freedom. 
people are coming to this YouTube channel from all over the world, and we're hearing testimonies that these videos are helping people. Do yourself a favor. We're giving this stuff away for free. We're giving away everything on our webpage, multiplyingfreedom.com. If there's anything that you need, go there. You will find classes like this. You will find prayer videos and you will find help. When we're not available and there's times that we aren't, we have a lot of stuff going on. We have people coming to us from all over the world. We're not able to keep up comfortably with what's happening. Our YouTube channel and our Facebook page, multiplyingfreedom.com, are helping people get free when we are not able to schedule live appointments with them. One thing that you want to do is you want to be very, very clear on my house needs to be clean. That includes your physical house and it includes your life. Go around your house from time to time and say, Lord, is there anything here that doesn't belong that I should get rid of? Is there anything in my life that does not belong that is better off gotten, getting rid of it? You may be surprised what God puts his finger on next. Now, one of the things you want to do is you want to study spiritual warfare. Paul wrote in Ephesians 6, very well-known passage, the full armor of God. We have stuff on our webpage and on the spiritual warfare videos. Pray along with me on the full armor of God, Psalm 91, who's in charge. There's a lot of stuff there that's very, very helpful. You need to get to the point where you're able to fight the good fight. Now, at the beginning, you're going to need help. Everybody needs help at the beginning, but what you want to do is you want to go through and start learning these passages, Psalm 91, Ephesians 6, go through and learn the places, learn the Psalms that deal with spiritual warfare, start memorizing verses that you can quote to the enemy, let God arise with his enemies be scattered in the name of Jesus, I scatter these attacks in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is part of what we need to do. We need to get very familiar with spiritual warfare. If you don't feel like you are, get help. Email us, multiplyingfreedom at gmail.com. This is very important. You want to be in a place where you are very, very comfortable handling spiritual attacks without always having to go get somebody else to help you. Everybody needs help sometimes. Nancy and I pray for each other all the time. But what you want to be doing is you want to be able to handle the battles on your own with prayer requests, emails, texts, whatever. What you want to be doing is you want to be in a place where you're feeding yourself from Scripture through the Holy Spirit. Many people, they are at excellent churches with good teaching. Praise God. I'm a teacher. That's what I'm doing here. But ultimately, my goal is to give people materials, videos, PDF files, and recommendations for books so that they have the ability to feed themselves spiritually. You can't be depending on a pastor, a teacher, any kind of ministry to feed you, feed you. They can supplement your diet. Look at them as supplements. But ultimately, God's best, and you read Psalm 119 sometime. If you've never read Psalm 119 all the way through, do yourself a favor and read it slowly, maybe one section a day. And look at what God says about scripture. Get yourself into the word so that you are reading the word in the spirit with Psalms, Proverbs, Gospels, and Epistles. The whole scripture is important, and I wouldn't put any of it in a secondary category. But for our purposes, when it comes to strengthening yourself, strengthening your spirit, strengthening your grasp on the gospel, you need to learn how to do it yourself. And this is extremely important because what happens if you don't have access to a pastor or a teacher or somebody experienced? Everybody needs help, and I still read books, I still study, but 
what I do is I read and I study with an eye towards being able to take care of business myself, whether it's spiritual warfare, whether it's reading the scriptures to apply it to my life or to understand what God is doing in the larger picture. It's very, very important to go through and say, this is what I need to do. Be in prayer and get filled with the spirit. What you want to do is you want to get to the place where you and the Lord are having a conversation throughout the day. You see this in the book of Acts. You see this all over the place where people are spoken to by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is guiding and directing people. And if you read the book of Acts, you will notice nobody seems to think this is exceptional, different, or only for a select few. It is for anyone and everyone. And if you are not getting into a conversational relationship with the Holy Spirit every day, you need to start asking him, please, Lord, I need this. You want to be in the spirit and say, Lord, I want to be hearing your voice all day long. I want to be so connected with you that I always know what you are saying to me hour by hour and minute by minute. If that is not your experience, and it is not the experience of most Christians, you want to be in serious prayer that this is something that God will give you. This is not exceptional. It's not for extra special Christians. It's not for the spiritual elite. It is for everyone. The first day I came to Christ, the first day, the Holy Spirit started speaking to me. I had no church background. I didn't have any Bible knowledge. I was completely ignorant. You can't imagine how ignorant I was. I was in my 20s. The Holy Spirit was speaking to me every day. This is what you need. If you don't have it, get it. Ask somebody to pray for you. Ask the Lord to intervene and give you the filling of the Holy Spirit. Tongues is fine, but for practical purposes, get the voice of the Lord speaking to you every day, and you will be very, very glad that you did. You want to be very aware of where are your weak spots. Where are your weak spots? You want to be very clear on what's going on. Where do I need to pray and take precautions? It's very important to know yourself and be honest with yourself. Where do I need to pray? What do I need to do to build a little safety into my situation so that I'm not as vulnerable to the works of the enemy? You want to be able to recognize when the enemy is coming and what he is doing. You want to rebuke them, refuse them, renounce them, and cast them down in the name of Jesus. You need to be able to say, here comes the enemy. I hear him, I see him, and I am going to resist him. James tells us, James 4, resist the devil and he will flee from you. You need to be in the position where the enemy is fleeing from you not bugging you and bothering you, fleeing from you. Let's look at that real quickly. It's a very important scripture. And I'll tell you what, you want to be in the place where you are living in scripture. Scripture is alive to you. You are reading it. You're learning it. You know where things are. You can look them up and find them. Get used to it like that. Okay, here's James chapter four. God opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble. This is James 4, verse 6. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Submitting yourself to God, this is part of taking up your cross and following Jesus. Submitting yourself to God means, okay, Lord, I surrender my life, my will, my, my checkbook, my car, my future, my relationships. I surrender all. I submit myself, I surrender myself, I dedicate myself to you. This is New Testament discipleship. It's not taught in many churches, regrettably, but it is extremely important. 
Radical discipleship means Jesus is Lord all the time, not only when I'm in the mood and when it is convenient, but Jesus is Lord all the time, every moment. And every moment I am listening for the voice of the Lord. Submit yourselves to God. This is radical discipleship, radical consecration. This is what I've been preaching around the world for 15 years. It never gets old because it's always God's will. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. The devil comes in many forms. His works, his, tech, his um, temptations and other things come in many shapes and sizes. You're not always going to recognize it. But once you recognize it, you need to say no, 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 no. It's like you're saying no to a little child or no to a dog or something like that. You say, no, 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 I'm not accepting this. I am going to resist you, devil. And whoever you're with, whatever spirit there is, I'm resisting you. You must leave me alone in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. It is written. Cleanse your hands and purify your hearts. If there's anything that needs to be cleansed, cleaned, purified, make sure you do it. Make sure you do it God's way so that you will have the grace of God helping you. God gives grace to the humble. He resists the proud. You don't have to have a cocky attitude to be proud. Spiritual pride can come is simply as, oh, I don't think I need to pray because I'm good at this. I don't think I need to ask the Lord because I already know the answer. Well, guess what? Joshua didn't ask the Lord about a certain situation, and he was very sorry later on. He didn't. You need to be asking God, what do you think, Lord? What do you want to do? Cleanse your hands and purify your heart. This is so important. And we need to take it with the utmost seriousness. Spiritual warfare. Learn what's going on. Praise and worship. Paul, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Learn this stuff. This stuff, I mean, sure, I've been in this a long time. But younger people, people haven't been in the word long enough. They can learn it too. It says, always be rejoicing. Always be giving thanks. Always be praying. This is what you want to do. You want to always be praying, always be giving thanks, always be rejoicing. This is the way of life. You can only do this by the Holy Spirit. You can only do this if you have the Holy Spirit flowing through you all the time. This is very important. Ask the Lord to send angels to protect you. Did you know that the angels are your helpers? Sure, they carry out the will of God, but Hebrews says they are the ones, and let's take a look. Hebrews. Not many people read Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14. Are not all the angels ministering spirits sent out to serve for the sake of those who inherit salvation? That's us. They are the servants of the saints of God. Remember, when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, the devil left him and angels came and ministered to him. They took care of him in his weakened condition in the desert as though they were scooping him up and refreshing him, feeding him and strengthening him. Ask, the angel, ask God to send the angels to come and help you, minister to you and bless you. You want to be very clear about this. Look at Psalm 91. He will give his angels charge over you to guard you in all your ways. 
They will lift you up in their hands so that you don't strike your feet against a stone. I want all of the protection and blessing that God is willing to give me. And that includes angels. Remember in the garden, Jesus said, after Peter had you know, cut off somebody's ear with a sword, he said, put that thing away. Don't you know that I could call on my father and he would dispatch more than 10 legions of angels. Now, we have angels that are waiting to hear the voice of the Lord saying, over there, help him, take care of that problem, get going. And the angels do that. That's what they do. They help people. They carry out the will of the Father. And we should be praying, Lord, look at this and help send your angels to take care of me. Jesus and Paul both said that forgiveness is critical. Jesus said, if you're not forgiving somebody, don't expect the Father to forgive you. Paul put it differently. He said, forgive one another any grievance as God in Christ has forgiven you. If you want God to forgive you freely, lavishly, and completely, do that for other people. If you're having trouble, go to our self-deliverance video, Steps to Freedom, on YouTube at Multiplying Freedom, and go and do the first self-deliverance video. It's on forgiveness, anger, and bitterness. Get free, because if there's any unforgiveness, bitterness, resentment, it's toxic, and the enemy will make very strong use of it. You want to be there, and you want to be totally free from unforgiveness. If you realize that you have sinned inadvertently, repent fast. Repent and forsake it. And say, Lord, I'm really sorry I messed up. I didn't mean to. Please forgive me. I want to be free. And I claim your forgiveness according to the scriptures. In the name of Jesus, Father, please forgive me. I want to be free and I want to be strong. Forgiveness for our sins is very, very important. Now, anything that you're on the fence with, anything that you're on the fence with, it's probably a good idea to just say, okay, I think God is dealing with me about this. I'm going to take care of it. Now, there's going to be times when you're not sure what God wants you to do. Well, you can ask a friend to pray for you. You can ask a friend for advice. But what you want to do is you want to clear up the question and say, am I responding to this thought or this feeling the right way? Am I cleaning my house? So what we've got here is radical discipleship. Radical discipleship for our purposes is the kind of discipleship that brings and helps you keep your freedom. It is not a program. It's not a Bible study. It's not a gimmick or a formula. It is a way of changing your life. Now, in the early church, the disciples were on-the-job trainees. They were guys that Jesus rounded up as he went around town. Hey, you over there, come on, follow me. Now leave what you're doing and follow me. And he had these people. And he taught them little by little. For our purposes, we have to realize that we are trainees, we are apprentices, and our job is to know the Gospels so well that we know what Jesus would say in almost any situation. Make that your goal. Lord, I want to know the Gospels so well that I know just in the, in the Spirit, oh, Jesus said this about that. Or forgiveness, yeah, I know what Jesus said. Or about prayer, oh, I know what Jesus said about prayer. If you do that, you will be so free. You will have power. I started doing this decades ago. It has been a very long, as Eugene Peterson said, a long obedience in the same direction. I would urge you, take this challenge. Take the Gospels and say, Lord, I want to be reading these books over and over until if I, I don't have to wonder and look it up for, to know what Jesus said about forgiveness, 
about giving, about prayer, about the evil one, about how to take care of conflicts, I won't have to ask because I'll know. You can do it. You can do a radical surrender and, dis and we will pray for this right away. Radical discipleship means walking in forgiveness, walking in holiness, walking in intimate relationship with God. It means being in a place where as far as you know, nothing in your life is out of line with God's will, with God's word, or with God's spirit. This is radical discipleship. And if you want to be free, this is where you need to go. Anything less, you're allowing the enemy to make trouble. You're allowing him to come in and trouble you. And I'm Nancy and I have talked about this for years. And we agree. This is the gospel that we are preaching. It's not the gospel of make a decision and be welcomed into heaven when you die. And we're glad that we're going to heaven. We're glad that Jesus loves us. But we are talking about what did Jesus, what does Jesus expect us to do here, today, tomorrow, this year, next year? How does he expect us to live? This is discipleship, doing what Jesus said to do, how he said to do it in every situation. If you do that, you're a disciple. If you're not doing that, you're not a disciple. I'm not going to speculate on anything beyond that but to say our understanding of discipleship equates to radical surrender, radical consecration, radical obedience, and radical overhaul, a complete makeover of your life. Nancy and I continue to work on this. We're not following a program or a study guide. We're in the word, we're praying, we're talking, we're reading people, we're talking to the Lord, and as God brings stuff up, sometimes we're taking a shower and God will drop an idea in our hand. Happens all the time. And being aware for anything in your life that is out of line with God's spirit, with God's ways, or with God's word. If you run across something, do yourself a favor and clean it up fast. What you're doing is you are eliminating a means of trouble for the enemy to trouble you. This is radical discipleship in the name of Jesus. So we're going to pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak to everyone who's listening to this broadcast or this recording. Father, we want to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. We know, Lord, you resist the proud, but you give grace to the humble. So we humble ourselves. We radically dedicate ourselves to you to your will, to your ways, to the way that you've spelled out in your word. We say Jesus is Lord. We bow the knee to him and we say we will obey Jesus. We will obey the Holy Spirit. We will line our lives up with the word of God. We will do what Jesus said to do. We will follow the scripture. We will be people of the book. That is what we are called in many places in the world. People of the book. This book, the book of life. Jesus says, my words are spirit and they are life. You're clean because of the word I've spoken to you. If you're taking the book and you're internalizing and living by it, you are clean and getting cleaner. So Father, I pray for all of us that you would so cleanse us, mold us, shape us, give us everything we need. Fill us with your Holy Spirit and give us a conversational relationship with yourself so that we know what's going on and we know how you are taking care of us. Father, we pray that you would speak to us. You would put your finger on stuff that we need to change, things we need to fix, things we need to adjust, stuff we need to study the word on. And I would say, Father, please make it clear what you want us to do about every little thing in our life so that our life can be conformed to the scriptures in the name of Jesus. Father, help us to be disciples who are living in the spirit, living according to the word, and living in such a way that they please you. Then we will be free and we will be impervious to the devil's attacks. 
in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. This is Bruce Gordon from Multiplying Freedom Ministries. Our web page is multiplyingfreedom.com. Our Facebook page and our YouTube channel are Multiplying Freedom. Please join our Deliverance Help and Discussion Group on Facebook. It's a wonderful group. There's a lot of good stuff you can learn, you can see, discuss things. Our email address for questions, comments, suggestions, or help is multiplyingfreedom at gmail.com. This is Bruce Gordon. Nancy and I bless you in the name of Jesus. We bless you with life and health and peace, and we pray that we will run into you again sometime soon. God bless you.